Far Cry 5 is the latest installment in a long line of open-world, first-person shooter games from software developer Ubisoft Montreal. This particular branch of Ubisoft's development empire has multiple staff members with their roots in Red Storm Entertainment, a software company co-founded by the late best-selling military fiction author Tom Clancy. So naturally, games made by Ubisoft Montreal should feature realistic depictions of military gear and weapons like in their 2015 comeback hit, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. But historically, the Far Cry series of shooters have played it fast and loose with gun details, ranging from odd mirrored firearms like this left-handed 1903 in Far Cry 2 to animations that show a lack of firearms knowledge like this reciprocating charging handle on the MP5 in Far Cry 3. But how does their latest installment compare? we take a closer look at the guns of Far Cry 5 and see how they stack up to their real-life counterparts. This is one of my favorite submachine guns both in real life and in Far Cry 5. It is in Far Cry 5 called the SMG-11, but its more accurate name is the Cobra Mac 11 9. It's a 9mm open bolt fully automatic submachine gun. Um, feeds from 32 round stick mags, but they do make uh, 50 rounders as well. Now, since the Mac 11 is an open bolt design, the safe way to handle the firearm is with the bolt closed. Let me demonstrate. When you pull the trigger, the bolt slams forward, hits the primer on the round, and sets it off. And because it's a machine gun, if you hold the trigger and cock it, the bolt still goes forward because it'll shoot until it's out of ammunition. So. This is considered one of the more rudimentary submachine guns. It does have a wire folding stock in real life. I do not believe you can utilize it in Far Cry, but, but it's supposed to only have a rate of fire of eight in the game, which is supposed to be on par with it with an M4, but it's actually, that's kind of inaccurate. With the uh, standard upper like we have here, the rate of fire varies based on ammunition load, but is always in excess of a thousand rounds a minute. The M4, generally not so much, but let's try this out. Firing 115 grain, Full metal jacket ammunition, 30 round magazine. Rudimentary iron sights. Awesome. Now compare that to the in-game version. The recoil of the SMG-11 in-game is mild, despite the real-life gun being extraordinarily violent thanks to its lightweight, open-bolt design, and incredibly high rate of fire. Like the real-life version, Far Cry 5's is a ton of fun to shoot, but it somehow does less damage than handguns chambered in the exact same caliber, even though they have shorter barrels. Another oddity is how the SMG-11 in-game mounts optics. The mount in-game appears to be based off an airsoft product and not a real mount and even then not really accurately modeled after that mount. Shooters in real life looking to mount optics on their Mac 11 SMG, pistol, or even carbine normally opt for either a side charging upper with a built-in Picatinny rail or a mount that must be drilled and tapped into the rear of the upper receiver. Overall, the SMG 11 in Far Cry 5 is a decent impression of the real-life Ingram Mac 11, but it fails to convey just how over-the-top and totally uncontrollable the real-life gun is. The fictional optic mounts, low rate of fire, and the oddly slow traveling bolt make the SMG-11 in-game feel like a watered-down version of its American classic subgun. One of the first firearms players unlock in Far Cry 5 is the P226. Chambered in 9mm Parabellum and clearly modeled after SIG's P226 pistol, the in-game version is mostly an accurate representation of the real-life gun. At least, aesthetically. Its stats are a totally different story. The 226 in in-game starts with a measly 10-round magazine, whereas the real-life version has a 15-round flush-fitting mag. The optional extended magazine bumps this capacity to the correct 15, but real-life extended P226 mags can hold between 20 rounds with an extended base plate and even up to 32 rounds with a particularly ridiculous-looking extended magazine. While the in-game version lacks in the capacity department, the makers of Far Cry 5 more than make up for this by giving it just as much damage and range as the game's weird hybrid AR-15 ACR clone, the ARC. Look, even the most bare-bones AR-15 carbine is capable of hitting a man-sized target out to 600 yards with enough force to incapacitate them provided proper shot placement. So it's really odd that the developers of Far Cry 5 would put the 226 on par with any carbine in a rifle caliber especially when the official effective range of the 226 in 9mm is listed at 55 meters, far short of the effective range of any rifle chambered in 556. 
Now compare that to this SIG P226. It's a nine millimeter semi-automatic handgun, just like the one in the game, except for this one's not two-tone, it's all black. And it's got the, uh, the slim, slim style grips that SIG later adopted. Now, obviously a few different aspects of this versus the one in the game is the fact that it can readily take a light or laser, in this case, a Streamlight TLR-8. And uh, it has a square suppressor, as they call it in the game, which is actually a Silencer Co. Osprey, in this case, 45, with, a, with an adapter piston to the oddball thread pitch, the 13.5 by one left-handed thread pitch of the SIG-226. And um, what's interesting, though, is that the suppressor in the game, the square one, actually has ventilation holes on it, which shows that the developers don't really understand how a suppressor works. Having ventilation holes um, that close to the, uh, to the muzzle would prove to be a very, very loud sound suppressor. But just the same, let's take a look and see how this thing handles compared to the one in game. Now, in, the, in Far Cry 5, the 226 is not the first handgun you get. It's the one that replaces the 1911. And one of the biggest advantages of it over the 1911 is that it has decreased recoil and increased magazine capacity. And, uh, but just like the one in the game, look how little recoil this gun has. Now it's very, very mild shooting gun. It's because it's an all metal gun. It's an aluminum lower steel upper steel slide, and it's firing a relatively mild cartridge, nine millimeter parabellum. Now let's try this unsuppressed with some nine millimeter, 115 grain full metal jacket provided by Federal Ammunition. And like I mentioned, it is lefty tighty righty loosey because it's a left handed thread pitch. All right, so I got the full metal jacket rounds right here. Well. See what the difference is like between the two. These are 115 grain. The last ones were 147 grain subsonics. These are very much supersonics. And uh, let's see how it goes and how it sounds compared to the suppressed model. Now it's substantially louder, but you'll notice it almost has a little bit less recoil because the suppressed model has a recoil booster installed inside of it to actually allow the gun to successfully cycle when the addition of that suppressor changes the amount of back pressure going into the gun. Now, one aspect that's really kind of strange about the way that the developers handled the whole terminal ballistics and effective range of this gun is that in Far Cry 5, they give the 226 identical damage and identical range to an M4. And uh, as much as I would like it to be the case, uh, there's no way in hell this thing can reach out to a thousand yards with any sort of efficacy. But just to give you more of a visual representation, we're gonna engage some steel targets out at about 75 yards, and I'll show you the difference between this and an AR. Let's go take a trip down range, guys. All right, guys, we're a little bit further down range now, and uh, I've got some human size silhouette targets set out to about 65 meters, and we're gonna take some shots on them, and these are reactive targets. Uh, the one we're shooting at is from Shoot Steel, and it, uh, it's spring-loaded and suspended on a 2x4. So basically, when you hit it, you, it's going to rattle a little bit, and that helps deflect some of the rounds that impacted into the dirt safely away. So we're going to use this as sort of an unscientific litmus test to give us a visual indication of how hard some of these rounds hit. Because even though in Far Cry 5, these weapons tend to, to hit the same in terms of like damage, Damage being presumably their interpretation of terminal ballistics, though I would be very surprised if anyone knew what that meant. Um, but just the same, it'll give us some kind of visual indication to see if the two hit the same. Now, because the 226 is supposed to have the same damage, accuracy, and range as the AR-C, uh, which is supposed to be basically a, an M4, we're gonna test it against a 5.56 ACR because I like confusing people even further. All right, so, Shoot steel target, 50, 60 meters, whatever, and I'll put some rounds on target with this SIG 226 firing 115 grain full metal jacket, nine millimeter ammunition. Now, as you can see, the target was really just barely moving. I mean, sure, this thing, this pistol still has a decent amount of ballistic energy in the projectile at that distance. More than enough to kill a human being or even small game, though it's less than ideal when compared to a long rifle. All right, I'm back with this Remington ACR. This particular model is an SBR with a 14 and a half inch barrel and it's sporting 
an innovative arms 30 caliber sound suppressor with an adapter provided by a silencer shop. And it'll be firing 55 grain M193 full metal jacket ammunition from this Magpul P-Mag. So on top of it, I've got one of Nikon's new black scopes. This thing's pretty slick. It's the Black Force 1000, has a horseshoe reticle with a BDC. It's pretty slick. All right, so we got that shoot steel target down there. Let me put some rounds down range and see how hard this hits by comparison to the nine millimeter out of the 226's short barrel. You can already see that it's making a quite a bit more of an impact. But despite having the same accuracy and range stat as the 226, this is a lot more accurate. I mean, look, I'll try and hit those uh, little three inch circles underneath the target. And provided this is actually zeroed, Yeah, it's no problem at all. Making that shot with a 226 from this distance, doable, uh, not terribly easy. Now, despite the fact that they're named somewhat similarly, the ACR and the ARC, ARC being the fictitious gun from Far Cry, are like nothing alike other than the fact that they both feed from Stanag magazines, or at least it looks like a Stanag magazine, and they both are chambered in 5.56. Far Cry's developers chose a really strange Franken AR as the main weapon of the crazed cultists in Hope County, Montana. It resembles a weird hybrid of a Remington ACR and a LaRue Tactical Ultimate AR build. And despite being based off these two guns, the ARC has an absurdly high rate of fire in-game. Based on the numbers, it's supposed to be as high as the game's SMG-11, itself a clone of the Ingram Mac 11-9, an SMG with an astounding rate of fire of 1,200 rounds per minute. Despite this incredibly high rate of fire, the gun is still very controllable in both full auto and three round burst. Which brings me to another oddity. No production models of the ACR and only a handful of Colt M4s are available in a configuration that permits for semi, full, burst, and safe modes, AKA a four position selector switch. Worse yet, the ballistics and trajectory of the 5.56 rounds fired from the ARC don't really follow any known ballistic paths of any established loadings for the cartridge. I confirmed this by hopping into the game's arcade mode and building myself a gun range. Once there, I fired at a target exactly 100 meters away and counted every single frame from when the round left the barrel until it impacted on target. The bullet took exactly 0.11 seconds to impact, giving us a velocity of around 900 meters per second. Now compare that to the real life velocity of 55 grain military 556 at 993 meters per second, and it's pretty close. But that's not the whole story. The rounds don't actively decelerate, so there is no ballistic coefficient. What's weird is the rounds follow a very specific trajectory despite traveling at a constant velocity the entire time. And given the real life ballistic arc of 55 grain 556, the in-game rifle's ballistics are impossible with all commercial loadings. Verdict? Well, the ARC is a pretty inaccurate portrayal of both the ACR and a run-of-the-mill AR-15 or M4. It also poorly recreates the ballistics of the 5.56 cartridge, offering none of the advantages of the flat shooting round while drastically underestimating its ballistic effectiveness, often requiring multiple headshots on close-range targets. I mean, at least it looks like an AR, sort of. Let's go with something a little less modern, the 4570. The first rifle the player unlocks after the default ARC is the 4570 a lever action rifle chambered in, you guessed it, 4570. Now the in-game model is clearly based on the Marlin 1895 rifle, which is a time-tested and extraordinarily robust design. But the real star of the show is the cartridge itself, 4570 Government. The massive 4570 cartridge is an immensely powerful round that dates back to just after the American Civil War, where it was used in converted Springfield muzzle loaders in an attempt to modernize the US military's existing supply of small arms. In Far Cry 5, the 4570 has a damage rating of seven, putting it above both the AKM and 556 carbines. And this makes sense. Most modern loadings of the round are vastly better suited to hunting large game, which tends to be much more durable and harder to kill than human beings. Now, modern loadings of the cartridge launch a 300 grain bullet, which is tremendous, at a little over 2,000 feet per second, producing around 3,860 joules of energy. This is massive. Compare that to a 55 grain 5.56 round, which produces less than half of that. 
Now, given its incredible power, the round should effortlessly drop big game at close range. But in Far Cry 5, it often fails to incapacitate small game like Wolverines, even with four center mass hits. Sometimes medium game like white-tailed deer take multiple rounds at 50 meters or less, even in the vitals, to incapacitate. And don't even get me started on the velocity. I repeated the previous 100 meter test, and while the time to target is identical, the trajectory is not. With the ARC, the round rises up to the paper target above the steel swinger before coming back down and striking it. On a lever action 4570, the bullet's flight path is nearly arrow straight, rising only two or three inches above the point of aim before striking the steel swinger. Anyone who's ever shot a 4570 knows this is not the case. Despite its high velocity, 4570 has an exaggerated ballistic arc, meaning at extended ranges, shooters tend to have to use a higher holdover to successfully engage targets. Now compare the game's 4570 to this Marlin 1895 chambered predictably in 4570. It's a hell of a hard hitter. Overall, the in-game version of the 4570 is a fairly realistic portrayal of the Marlin 1895, at least in terms of aesthetics and capacity, but the lack of stopping power and the weirdly flat ballistic arc keep it from feeling like a real rifle. It looks good, it sounds good, it's satisfying to use in the game, but it hits like a marshmallow sometimes, which can kind of ruin the immersion. A staple of the Middle East, freedom fighters, Soviets, and movie bad guys for decades, the AKM is the lightweight sibling of the AK-47. Just like the 47, it's chambered in 762 by 39 but uses a stamped steel receiver as opposed to a milled one. Both the AKM and the AK-47 are renowned for their reliability and durability. Most shooters tend to make the AKM represent the higher damage, slower shooting, less accurate alternative to an M16 or M4. In the most simplistic terms, this is basically true. The average AKM is less accurate but fires a more powerful if shorter range round. Now compare Far Cry's AK-47 to this Romanian SAR-1 AKM clone chambered in 7.62 by 39. In real life, the AKM 7.62 by 39 millimeter cartridge is still very deadly past 300 meters but its relatively low velocity and dramatic ballistic arc make landing shots on distant targets much more challenging than with a flatter shooting round like say 5.56 or 2.70. Interestingly enough, in previous Far Cry games, the AKM or AK-100 series rifles would balance the rifle's increased lethality by restricting it from using optics. This time around, the developers of Far Cry 5 allow players to mount optics on their AK, but for some reason has these optics mount on a small Picatinny rail slot that replaces the AK's rear sight. Now this in and of itself is not unrealistic. This sort of mount absolutely does exist and I've used them myself, but they don't play well with magnified optics. The reason being eye relief. While there are some exceptions like scout scopes and pistol scopes, most rifle scopes are designed to have eye relief sufficient only for shooters to have their eye a few inches behind the scope. Beyond this distance, the sight picture inside the scope becomes either impossibly small or incredibly unstable and thus unusable anyway. Other than that, a fairly realistic portrayal of the gun. Overall, Far Cry 5's AKM is the most accurate representation of the AK the series has featured thus far. The inclusion of optics makes the AK in the game a much more viable option than in past games, but because the AKM in Far Cry 5 uses a cone of fire, instead of simply following where the gun is actually pointed, it still feels too arcadey and it's a little too random to be truly usable. The in-game AKM looks like an AKM with only a few cosmetic mistakes like the pistol grip and the lack of a side rail. The AK for the most part sounds like an AK and it's satisfying to use but the damage is very inconsistent. Sometimes it feels like headshots just bounce off medium game while other times it seems to launch them into the air like their bodies are just styrofoam filled rag dolls. Look, realistically, the developers of Far Cry 5 probably weren't attempting to create a perfect simulation of what it would be like for a single, oddly well-armed police officer from Montana to take on a crazed cult with billions of dollars in military hardware. 
That said, given the amount of money spent on the game, it wouldn't have killed the developers to invest a little more effort into the guns and their ballistics. If you're looking for a solid mill sim dripping with realistic details, look elsewhere. Far Cry 5 isn't that sort of game. However, the game is still enjoyable despite these inaccuracies, and the beautiful environment and the excellently voice-acted antagonists make for an unforgettable game even in spite of the occasional out-of-place wooden animation and lack of weapon diversity. Perfect. Well, thanks guys. Uh, special thanks to Ventura Ammunition, providing ammo for the review, Blackhawk Tactical for some of the slings utilized in some of the previous guns, and of course, special thanks to all you guys for tuning in and watching this episode of TFB TV. I'm Jim Grant, catch you on the flip side.